you want to make sure that none of your jars are cracked or anything like that. So we want to make sure that all our jars are have no nicks. Even the brand new ones, when you get them out of the case, just check them. So you're going to be looking for mason jars. They're called mason jars, wide mouth or regular mouth. The next thing you're going to be looking for are called um, the lids and the bands. So the lids is this piece here. When you take off, usually when you buy a new set, it comes with everything. This is the lid. It's a separate piece, but there are two pieces that you need. You need the lid and the band. The band is just the ring. You see that? The lid has a sealing compound on the inside, and that's what's used to seal the lid to the jar when we process them. And so don't use any other any other lids for your canning process. Um, these are designed to work together, so always buy canning lids. So you'll put the lid on top, making sure it's sitting nice. Sealing compound should sit right lip of the lid. Then you'll just put your ring on and tighten, okay? So when we can, we never use our lids um, again. We only use them once because we want to use, make sure that, that we have a good seal every time we can. So the only part you're going to be replacing when you're reusing uh, your products is the lid. You're going to replace the lid. You'll use the jars and the rings over and over again um, until they become damaged or anything else. Um, so when you go to the grocery store, you can just buy lids. Um, or you can buy lids and rings together, but go to thrift stores. There's tons of rings. Yard sales have tons of rings. So those are places you can find them really cheap. The other thing we need is a uh, canning pot. So if you look behind me, this is a canning pot. It's going right now. A canning pot will, will have the pot and the lid and there's a rack inside. The handout um, I, I sent to you has a picture of a, a rack, but we're not going to be able to see it too much because we're, we're, um, we're using it. It's very hot, but you'll see us using it later today. You do need the rack when you can. Your jar should not touch the bottom of the pot. It's just a safety precaution. Just that little bit of air between the bottom of the pot and your jars should allow for a nice, even um, distribution of heat. So just make sure you always use a rack. You can find these pots used different places, and if it doesn't have a rack, you can buy a rack. So you can find the racks by themselves. This whole piece um, costs probably close to 25 bucks for the whole set. I mean, just the pots. A case of regular mouth pint jars was about $9. So they run anywhere from eight, seven to 12, depending on the size you're buying. But we usually buy them in a jar, I mean a case. And you can find them at Walmart and Target and Cal Ranch, those kinds of things. So the second um, tools we're going to need are canning utensils. You can find um, them all separate or you can buy them together as a pack. So we're going to start with a lid wand. A lid wand is a, um, a piece of plastic long stem and it has a magnet on one end. And what this allows us to do is the magnet grabs the lids out of the hot water that you put them in because you put your lids in when you're processing them to sterilize them. And I'll show you right here. I just turned off this oil water. We're going to drop our magnet in and what it does is it grabs a couple pieces of lids. You see that? And I'm going to grab them on the side. I'm not going to grab them in the middle because this is now sterilized. We've been boiling it for a while. So we're going to pick it up and then just drop it down to the side face up. I'll just grab a few more that I can see, get them all out of there. See how easy that is. There's no way we can put our hands into that boiling water, so we're going to use a lid one. The other tool is a bubble remover and headspace tool. It looks like this. It's a piece of plastic. It's pretty flexible. I mean, it's not, it's, it's flexible, not pretty flexible, but you can bend it. Um, on one end, it's, it's rounded, and then on the other end, there's a little steps you can see. If I put it in front of me, maybe you can see it better. Um, these little steps are marked off for a whole inch. This is the bottom of the mark, and then here is one inch. And then we're going, we're going from here to here in increments. And it, if you look real close and you have good eyesight, <laughs> they actually have them marked on here, but it's hard to see on the camera. So if I look at it, this says one inch, three quarters, half, and a quarter. So what, what this does, this is called a, a bubble remover and headspace tool. So when you're canning, you're always going to see the recipe that's going to tell you to leave so much headspace of a liquid or whatever you're canning 
from the bottom of the jar to the top. This is your head. So this little tool helps you measure that head space. So sometimes the recipe will say, leave one inch of head space. This is your one inch mark. You're gonna put that one inch mark on the top, on the inside. And wherever the bottom falls, you see the bottom end of that, this piece right here, wherever that falls, that's where your liquid should be uh, up to in head space. Or sometimes your recipe will say it only requires a quarter inch head space. So we're gonna use the, the bottom ring and you can fill almost everything almost to the very top. You can see it's like, like right here. So each recipe is different. You always have to follow your recipe, but this helps you measure that head space as you're um, figuring that out where to stop filling with liquid. On the other side is the bubble uh, remover. So we're gonna, once we fill our jars, we want all the bubbles out. We stick this in here and move our stuff around to allow any bubbles to come out of the surface. That's how we use this. And you'll see us use this in action today. The other tool we're gonna use is a jar lifter. You can see they come in blue and they also come in green. You can't find a set that has both. I have one of each, so that's why I have two different colors. But the jar lifter um, is this tool, it's like a tong. Um, and there's a rubberized piece on one end, and then there's handles on the other. The rubberized piece works with the jar. That's the part that connects the jar. You can even see it's rounded here at the bottom. So when we're gonna use it, we're gonna grab it and put, it, put our, our tongs over the lip of the jar and pull it up. And then this is the handle at the top. Sometimes the handles fall off, they're kind of cheap, but just make sure we're using it the right way. It's, it's designed to pick hot jars out of the water and you'll see us do that here in a second. I've seen people use it this way. It's possible, but it's very hard because it doesn't stay. So just remember the rubber connects to the glass. The last piece, the last tool you're gonna to buy is a funnel, a jar funnel. It's a plastic funnel that has a wide opening and it fits both regular mouth and wide mouth jars. So um, what you're gonna do, it's translucent so you can see through it and you just, when you're filling anything hot and you don't wanna make a mess, you can just put your funnel in the jar if it's a wide, wide, regular mouth, perfect. And then you use this to fill your liquid in the jar. Okay, so these are the tools. You definitely need these tools when you're gonna can. Um, this set of four you can buy, oh, I picked up my measuring spoon. This set of four right here costs you about nine or $10, and you only have to buy them once, and you'll use them over and over and over again. I'm sharing you a recipe for the way I like to make pickled jalapenos, um, or serranos. It came out of the University of California, and I love it. It's really, really plain, really easy. Um, but there's plenty other more recipes for pickling chili in here that you guys can follow. So just when you get the book, check it out and decide which one you guys want to try. And so this is going to be something about like what we're going to make today. It's going to be in a pint jar. Um, these are called yellow hots and all chili turns red if you leave it on the vine long enough. So these are yellow hots that are yellow, but we left some on the vine and they start to turn red. Look how pretty that is and they're canned in this recipe today. So this is look kind of what you're gonna be getting, but yours are gonna be green because we're pickling green chili today. And this recipe I'm sharing with you today, actually you can pickle bell peppers with them. We all know bell peppers are not hot. They're a, they're a sweet pepper and there's a whole bunch of other kinds of sweet peppers. So you can even pickle non-hot peppers in my head. It's like, why would you do that? But Anyway, people do it. So yes, you can mix. I actually have um, upstairs, I don't even know I have any more, but last year um, I did, we got to the kind of the end of the season where there was just a few left and we just put a whole bunch of chilies together, jalapenos, serranos, Hungarian wax, yellow hots. Those are all hot chili. So we just put them all in the bowl together, mix them up and then stuff our jars with them. And then I just label it mixed chili because it's all different kinds, right? Um, the other thing we can do is, let's say we only have pint jars, this is a pint jar, but we only have chili for this much. So we don't have any small jars. What I would just do then is put stuff, the chili in the jar, fill it with liquid and just put it in the refrigerator. Let it sit there for a couple days to let it get jellied up. I mean, get, you know, constitute itself. And then you can eat them fresh. You don't have to can them. So if you wanna just keep a jar out that you're not gonna, preserve, you can just, 
you don't have to do the last step. You can just eat them right away, but you have to put them in the refrigerator. But this is such an easy recipe because it calls for four quarts of chili, whatever kind of chili you have, four cups of vinegar, four cups of water, four tablespoons of salt. So four, 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 four. That's what I love about it. We're Hopis, right? We like that number four. <laughs> So four quarts peppers, four cups of vinegar, four cups of water, and four tablespoons of salt. That's the basic recipe. I modified it when I sent it to you to add three to four tablespoons of salt. So if you want to cut back on the salt, you can drop it down to three or you can even drop it down more. This is the cool thing about canning. You can do whatever you want with, with modifying certain things. Say, so, okay. So, um, so pickling chili. One of the first things we do when we're going to definitely preserve. We're going to can process these jars because we want to preserve them. When we say canning and when we say preserving, we're going to do a process that allows us to, to safely preserve an item in a jar so that we can put it on the shelf and let it sit there for about a year or so. Okay, it's not going to go bad. It's not going to mold. It's, but, so the process we're doing actually kills a lot of the bacteria found naturally in foods and so that we can, it can safely sit on the shelf. So this particular jar of chili, ooh, it's actually from October 2018, it's two years old. You see how old some of my stuff is. Ideally, we should eat things within a year because you're gonna get more chili next year and we can do it again. So I need to, I need to eat these, but they're also probably gonna get a little mushy. They're probably already mushy because they're two years old sitting in this liquid. They still taste great, but they're gonna be soft. So um, that's just something that happens as longer they sit. So as we're gonna, if we wanna preserve our yields, our nut one, what we're gonna do is make sure that we sterilize everything that we're gonna do so that this, this is clean. So the first thing we do is we take our brand new jars out of the package. I did this earlier this morning, so we're not gonna show you this piece, otherwise we'd be here a whole nother hour. And we're gonna unscrew, take everything off, and wash them with hot water and soap. That hot water and soap is just gonna take out the dirt. Once we clean them with hot water and soap, then we are going to put our jars in a pot, in our canning pot full of water. And we're gonna boil these. So you can't, I don't know if you can see, you can probably hear, but this water, uh, these jars, have, um, I filled them up this morning and they've been boiling. And we want to get our, our temperature, you can get a thermometer out and put it in there and make sure it's at 212 degrees. Or the easiest way is to make sure it's a, a rolling boil. I'm gonna turn it back on, so, so maybe we can show you what that is. A rolling boil is when, you're, when your water is just tumbling in the, in the, it's boiling and just tumbling like, and not stopping. So we wanna keep our heat high so that when it reaches that point, we're gonna put the jars in, put water in, turn our heat on. It's gonna probably take 45 minutes, almost an hour to reach that rolling boil point. When we get to that point, then I come over to my timer and I set the timer for 10 minutes. I don't know if you can see that, but it's not running at 10 minutes. And then you're gonna leave that those jars in that rolling boil process for 10 minutes. We don't start timing until we see that water really, really going. So I did that already. Um, the, the jars are sitting in here, have been boiled already for 10 minutes. Um, and they're just, and then I just left them. So that's the first thing you're going to do. So before you start anything, always get your jars washed and in the water and, and bringing them up to speed because that takes at least 45 minutes to an hour to get that done. So first thing when I'm canning, I wash all my jars, I put them in the pot, I fill the water up. And if I'm canning first thing in the morning, I'll do all this at night. I'll get it all ready, then I get up in the morning and all I have to do is turn it on. So it just depends, so it takes a while. What we're doing, what that water does is it kills any of the bacteria that are found in the jars and on the lids. So I stuck the lids in with the jars and started the whole process. So once, we, once they've been boiled for 10 minutes, that's sufficient enough time to kill any, any leftover particles. Because when we washed them, all we did was took off the dirt. 
we didn't take off any bacteria or mold or anything like that. So we wanna make sure our jars are sterile because we're gonna use them to store food and we don't wanna get sick from that. So that's the main thing, okay? I'm gonna turn my camera off for now. We're gonna use that again. Um, and, then, and then if I'm not ready to start canning yet because I'm still processing the food that's going into it, I'm just gonna leave my jars in the pot of hot water. I, I need my jars hot usually when we're gonna can. So I started it, we're ready to go. They've been boiled. They are now, and the lids are ready to go, so now we're ready to start our can. So what we did earlier this morning as well as we prepped a lot of the food because canning usually takes at least three hours, anywhere from two to three hours from start to finish, because there's just so much things to do in between. Uh, we, we cut the class down in half to do things before, and then we just have to do some of the stuff live on the, uh, with you guys, so we'll take up a little bit of time. So if you, if you look at the recipe I sent you, we said we wash the peppers thoroughly, meaning we just put them under hot water, making sure there's no bird droppings or any kind of other bugs on them. We're gonna wash them off. If we leave them whole, you can, I like to uh, cook my, or process my chili, at least jalapenos and serranos whole. What I did was I just cut the stem off. You see the stem is kind of cut off here. So I went to all of these and I just trim, I just use a scissor and I just trim the stem off. And I'm just, because the stem kind of gets in the way when you're trying to pack them in the jars. So I'll just come back later. I mean, I'll, I'll rinse them, wash them off, and then I'll cut off the stems. And I'll do that with my serranos too. I think I already did that with all my serranos. The second thing we're gonna do with our chili, if you leave them whole, is you're going to um, cut a slice through them. So if you left them like this and process them, they would be great and hot when you eat them. But if you, if you, stab them, I'm just basically stabbing the chili with a knife. What that does is when they're processing, all the, the heat that's in the chili will release juices out from the chili and it'll get your, your all your chili, I mean, it'll just, even the juice will be really, really hot, it's nice. So, um, so I just stab each chili like this if we're gonna leave them whole. If I'm gonna do that with serranos, I'm also gonna, if I'm gonna, uh, can them whole, I'm also gonna stab the serranos. See, I'm just going through and I'm, this is just one, two, three, anywhere from two to four stabs, depending on what you're like. Remember, once, you're, once you stab it and take the, the um, knife out, you can get chili, um, some of the oils from inside onto your hands. Be careful, don't touch your eyes, don't touch your nose, you'll be in trouble with this hot stuff. But we're just going to stab. I just have a small batch of serranos um, that we're going to do today. And then Yvonne's going to bring over some chili that she we, we, we got from um, the store. We didn't have enough. We picked some chili from our garden this morning. Um, we have an extension garden at our office at the old mission school. We have uh, serranos and jalapenos. Unfortunately, these serranos are not from our garden because they're not ready yet. These little jalapenos are from our garden. Very, very hot. And then we have some store-bought jalapenos and look at the difference. It's like three, twice as much, definitely maybe almost three times. We, we forgot to not cut one. Oops. The um, other way we can prepare our jalapenos is to slice them up and then can them as sliced chili. So you'll see this one here. It has very thin slices like the kind you find on um, on uh, when you buy nachos at the store. Let's have tiny, thin sliced jalapenos. And then the other way we can do this is with chunkier ones. These are just cut really thicker. So the thinnest ones will fit the easiest in the jar. The thicker ones will be the next. And then these, we kind of have to take time to stuff them in. Okay, we're gonna do all three today. We got the chili ready, we got the jars ready. Jars meaning you have to have rolled, rolling boil for 10 minutes and the lids. We prepped our chilies, we washed them, sliced them, or um, stabbed them, and they are now ready to pack. So what we are going to do is called a raw pack method. That's when you pack a jar with a raw ingredient. Our chilies are raw, they're not cooked, we just picked some of them. There's also a hot pack method where you cook whatever you're putting in the jar 
Uh, so you'll see these words when you look at your recipe book. It's a raw pack or hot pack. But raw pack really just means we're, whatever we're putting in the jar is going to be raw. So we're going to do a raw pack method of peppers. And I'll read the, I'll read the thing and then we'll do it. So we're going to use our jar lifter. And we're going to take out a hot sterilized jar from the pot and place it on a counter that is lined with a dish towel. We have a stack of clean dish towels here. So you're going to need dish towels and you're going to need hot pads. Those are all the tools that I didn't put on the list, but every kitchen has one. Just make sure we have some clean, dry ones. We're going to take out a jar, put it on the counter, and put it on a dish towel. The reason we put it on a dish towel is our jars are very, very hot. And sometimes, especially if you have like air conditioning or if you're doing this in the evening when it's cooler and your countertop, mine is stainless steel over here, depending if you have tile, just depends on what you have. It can be cool or even cold. And you can take a hot jar and set it down in a cold space it can crack your jar. Um, and so we just always, it's just good practice to always just put a dry dish towel down anytime you're working. It's gonna get wet over the course of the day, so we may have to replace it with some dry ones. Um, we're gonna pack our peppers tightly into the hot jars. We're gonna use the funnel. And we're going to use the bubble remover and headspace tool because we wanna make sure that we have one half inch headspace. That's what the recipe says. Um, and then we're gonna, oh, we're gonna pack the peppers, fill it with liquid, and then check the headspace, remove the bubbles, and put the jar in, okay? So the one thing I did not do was prepare our brine. The brine is the liquid that goes into the, into the jar. We prepped the peppers, so our recipe said four quarts peppers, we probably have about three, Five, four cups vinegar, uh, four, cu four cups of water, it's about a quart, so this is water, I'm going to pour it into the jar, I mean into the pot, put it on, on high for now, and then I'm going to get four cups vinegar. The recipe says to make sure your vinegar is at an acidity of 5%. When you buy your vinegar, read the label, um, we want to make sure it's at a 5%. If this was bought at Walmart's Great Value brand, it says dilute it with water to 5% acidity. So just look at the labels. Usually it says it really big. Double check. This recipe is half water, half vinegar, so it's going to be very vinegary. There's some recipes that have more water and less vinegar. Um, you can try those and see what you like, but I just like this one the way it tastes. I like it vinegary. That's my preference. I'm gonna pour four cups of vinegar, four cups of water, and three to four tablespoons of salt. I'm just gonna put three tablespoons in. There's one, two, and three. Okay, so we're gonna heat the brine up. We're gonna simmer it. You should never boil, don't boil vinegar for a very long time. It, the, the vinegar has, it's just volatile. It's got a lot of compounds in it that when you boil it, it gets dangerous actually. So we're just gonna heat it to the point where we're gonna melt the, melt the salt and heat up the liquid. And mix, it just, we're just gonna get it right to boiling. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in here. I'm using pink Himalayan salt, so my brine's a little pinkish color. If you just use regular table salt, you won't have that color. We're gonna let that simmer. I'm gonna go ahead and pack the whole chili. So I'll bring my pan over here, take the lid off, and I'm gonna use my jar lifter and lift a jar out and pour the water out. This is the most dangerous part because that water is hot. And your dexterity, helps with this so if you're elder and you need you might want to get somebody to help just to make sure you can fully grip it because that can be a little tough if you have things like arthritis and such okay well i'm going to use the outside of the jar to grab it because it's hot now that i pulled the jar out i don't want to touch the inside of the jar because the jar is sterilized okay this is a clean good jar so we're not going to touch it once we pull it out i'm going to grab my jalapenos and i'm going to start throwing them in the jar and then I just kind of look and I shake the jar to make sure they've kind of 
go in. I, I put some in fat in first, and I put some in skinny in first, just kind of going back and forth. Can use this tool to kind of push them around if I see space somewhere. This is the hardest part, really, is packing a jar because they're all different sizes and they don't always go where you want them to go, and you gotta kind of mess with them. Same way making pickles, you're just gonna throw these in there and then try and get them to land where you want them to go. This just takes practice of getting it really good. You've know, you know you've uh, packed a good jar when you have very little space at the bottom when we're done. We're gonna look at that when we're done. So I'm just gonna, then I look at it halfway, it's packed halfway, the jar is kind of cooled off. Looks okay, so I'm, there's still room, so I'm gonna just stick a few more in there. This best sign, I like really push them in there because they're gonna, they're gonna actually shrink a little bit because they're gonna cook when they're in that hot boiling processing stage. There's an old one, so it's all in pee. Okay. Uh, got that one in there. I think I can fit one more. Okay, that's about as, be careful, you see how that one's sticking above the jar? Um, skinny one, skinny ear. Okay. There's this little, there's a little one right here. This cute little one, should fit right on top. Okay, so we packed our jar. We have enough for another jar of jalapenos. So then I'm gonna put my funnel over the jar. See that? Sits right in there. And then remember the recipe said half inch headspace. Usually I put my canning jar on the other side because I forgot I need to fill. I'm gonna move this around. Can you guys see? Okay, so I'm gonna take my brine. It's, it's, it's very close to boiling already. All my salt is melted, melted. And I'm just gonna take my liquid and I'm just gonna pour it slowly into the jar. So we're using hot liquid in a hot jar with raw ingredients. We're going to fill that. I'm, I'm going to guess right now where half an inch might be. It's over here. Not too hot. I'll show you my headspace. So you see the, I don't know if you can see the liquid. Liquid's like right. It's hard to do this when you're holding it because it might not be level. So I, you always put it on the level surface and then measure. But just to show you, um, this is how we would use the tool. You see some of this uh, jalapenos is poking up. I'm gonna push them down and then just put the, the jar back on the ground so it's level. It's definitely not up to quarter inch headspace yet. So I'm gonna come over and just add a little bit more liquid to it. What happens if we add too much liquid? That's, that's going to happen. So now I have it up. I can tell, you can't tell, but I can tell it's right at a half inch. The liquid is at the half inch mark. So the next step, very, very important, is that we take a paper cloth, a paper towel. I'm going to dampen it with some water. Just a little bit of water. I'm going to take the paper towel and wipe the rim of the jar. I know we used a funnel. The rim is the, the top of the jar that meets the lid. So I don't need to wipe the edge, I need to wipe the top. So I'm gonna, because we wanna make sure that when that lid hits the jar, it's a good seal. So that's one thing I'm gonna do before I put the lid on. The other thing I'm gonna do is just check for bubbles. I'm gonna turn it around. I see a bubble on this side of myself, so I'm gonna use my bubble removal tool. I'm gonna to stick it down in there, and I'm gonna push the, the kind of the fruit away from the ends. And there's a bunch of bubbles that came up that I didn't see before. So I'm, I'm only working with the ones I can see. But if I just stick it in there and kind of move your chili around, all the bubbles will come up. Okay, I usually do that first. Then I grab my paper towel and I wipe the rim. And then I'm going to get my sterilized lid and I'm carrying it like this, not like that. 
on the edge. I'm gonna put it right down on top. Right on top of the jar, grab my ring. I don't know if you noticed, but when I put it on, I can still see, see there's a little bit of space. That's okay, I have a little piece of chili that won't go down. I'm gonna use the ring to push it down. So we're gonna tighten it just as far as your fingers can tighten. You're not gonna use your whole wrist, you're not gonna over tighten it as tight as your fingers can tighten it. Good to go, okay? It pushed that seal from the lid down to the jar, and now we're gonna do all the rest. I'm gonna go ahead and work quickly and do the next ones. You can just watch me over here. If you have any questions, you can shout them out. So it's harder to do the um, it's harder to do the whole peppers. I'm telling you right now, it's because you have to try and pack what you can in the bowl. So I'm trying not to touch the inside of the jar. I'm just pushing the chili in. Let me see if I can get one. So it's just harder to do chili that's um, whole. Okay, that looks like that's all that's going to fit, really. Crunch that one a bit. Grab my funnel. Over here. Grab my ladle. Every time before I, I throw my brine in, I always um, stir it. Because if you're using other things like spices in there, they all fall to the bottom. Salt has a diluted and go to the bottom. So we're just going to throw it in, you know, always stir before we fill it up. And I only make one batch at a time unless I know I have tons of chili. I'm only going to make one batch of that because I don't want to get stuck with a bunch later and, and, and waste it. So, see that chili sticking out again? I don't know if you can see it. All right. And I'm just going to stick my tool in there, pick out as much bubbles as I can. No. And then I'll try and stick these back in there as best as I can. Grab my, I'm just wiping the top. Grab my lid. My rings are on this side. One thing you can do is stop the jar. When I did that, I don't think that came up too. Just lightly. And I'm on to the next jar. Get another jar out. Now we're ready for our um, sliced jalapenos. I don't think I can get any more whole ones in. So there's like two left. We'll eat those for dinner, maybe. Let's start with the. Let's do one chunky one first. So, um, so we're going with the next harder one, which is the chunky one. And I just usually use my fingers. I'm washing my hands. If you don't want your fingers to get dirty, make sure you wear gloves because the chili is going to get on your finger. Okay, I'll throw them in there. I throw them in there and I shake them out. I shake them around just to see where they, so they can kind of like land with each other. You can also use tongs. If you want to add more flavor at this point, you can throw in some spices. You can throw in things like a whole, car whole garlic clove. You want to add a little bit of flavor to that. Ooh, this is really hard. This is way harder to pack. Stick ones. I'm just like pushing them in there, sticking them down. When I see a spot, I kind of like just this is a lot harder than I thought. Okay, we'll get another thick one and throw it in there. I don't want to stick my finger in there because it's so it's like kind of grab. But my finger is way stronger than this top. I won't stick it all the way in there. I'll just kind of grab where I can and push it in without touching the jar. Okay. Let's see if I'm just spacing it. What I might do? Can you get me the slice, the smaller slices? So 
what I might do is there's still a bunch of space in here, but I can't get the thick chunks in there because they're so big. So I'm going to grab a couple of these small ones and I'll just throw them in and fill in the space. But you'll see when you're starting to pack how much easier it is to just use a smaller, smaller slice of that. Stick one right in the back. This I'll stuff in there. See how much longer it's taking. This is like the longest part of the whole thing. Maybe this and boiling the water. I'll put a couple of them in there. There's still a lot of space. I can see a lot of space. Because this is like a class and we don't have too much time, we'll leave it like that. Um, but it, it does take time to properly stuff as much as you can in there. We'll take our we'll take our brine, use our funnel, let's fill it up. I'm kind of eyeballing. I have a sense of what half inch half inch taste looks like now it's been in a while. Too many bubbles on these. Okay, half inch of space. I'm going to leave it there because when I push the ch chili in, the liquid goes up. But after I let it go, it comes up and then the headspace goes down. So one more step. Can anybody remember what I have to do? i got to wipe the rim. So I'm going to wipe the rim. This always gets left out a lot of times just to get the view over here. Throw that in there. And then now I'm going to do one with... Um, a smaller chili, just to show you how much faster that is. So if you have help, one of you guys can be getting the chili out and putting a lid on, while the other person is loading up the loading up the, the jars. So I'm taking the um, using the tongs now because I don't want to touch too much of this chili. I'm just throwing them in here. And I'll shake it around and let them lay down flat or you know, a little bit nicer. So I'll just fill a little bit of ways and then I will, okay, I'm going so far and I'll shake it. Maybe I push it down. It's kind of hard to push up through that holes. <laughs> it's going way, way, way faster. So opinion-wise, if I'm thinking about what I want to do, if I have a whole bunch of chili I'm trying to preserve, I either do whole chilies or small slices. And then you can even do dice. Like you can like, you know, chop these up even finer, dice them up. So now we have one good jar full of chili. I could probably pack it better with my finger if I had gloves, but I don't have gloves. So I'm just gonna, you see how that, that's pretty packed. So I'm gonna take my, same thing, we're just repeating the process, stir it up. We're just going to repeat over and over until our jars are done for our um, yield is done. So what happens if I did put too much in there? I said that earlier and I didn't finish my thought. Let's say I put too much brine, I'm way above half inch. It's almost to the very top. What shall I do? So what you can do, oh look at they all came out when I was checking the bubbles, push it back in. So what you can do is um, get a spoon, just go in and ladle off some of that juice. Just throw it in the sink and throw it away. Get out some of the juice. So you get a spoon and then take some of the juice out and let her again. And you're good to go. Put the lid on. Get a ring. We now have four. We have like we went halfway, but we have eight jars in here. The recipe I, I gave to you um, says it can make uh, eight pints. So this is eight pints. You don't have to make that much. If you, you only have enough to do um, a couple, then just do a couple. You'll have some brine left over, the vinegar, water stuff, but. Um, 
can put that in the fridge and it'll last for about a week before you need to use it. So if you don't finish, uh, for example, if you only have a couple of um, uh, plants and you only got enough for one jar, make one jar and then put the brine in and then next week pick some more chili and make another jar. Um, you can do that. So you don't have to wait until, or you can do like us, where we used half of our yield from the garden, then we bought the other half because we didn't have enough to. So how many students do we have today, Yvonne? Four students. So we, we just made four jars of chili. Yeah, four. And um, we're going to give a jar each to the staff at the mission school where our garden is because they have been, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have anything. They're out there every day watering and weeding for us because we're not there all the time. So um, we got to make sure that they get they get their share for their taking care of the garden. So I'm looking at the jar and I can see that there's a huge space down here. So I just I thought I was done, but when I turned it around, looked at it, I could see that there was a big space. So I just used my tongs and pushed it down. I'm sorry. So once you know the water bath method, you can can a bunch of different stuff that have high acid. This water bath canning is only for high acid foods. Now chili doesn't have any acid in it. So what we do though, is we add the acid with vinegar. So any vinegar based, pickling based um, stuff is a, becomes high acid because usually if it's vinegar or, or it ferments to a certain point. Some recipes have um, also add lemon juice to it because the citric acid in lemon juice increases the acidity. So those um, are safe when it comes to food safety. To, um, to can with this method. Make sure you read the recipe. If it tells you to water back can, that's what we're learning today, that's what you can. The other method that we're not gonna to learn today, I hope in the future we can do classes on, is pressure cooking. So pressure canning and water back canning are the two methods that we learn to, to can things. So let me look at my headspace. I actually have a little bit too much headspace. So I'm just gonna, Push it down, take out some of my juice. I'm gonna throw it in the in the sink and I'm gonna put it back in the jar. It looks like we're okay. Then I'm gonna grab top of my lid, clean it off, and then top of my rim, grab my lid, put it on, grab my ring. Got a couple more. What I'm going to do is, um, the water has been hot. It's, it was hot already because it was boiling. I'm gonna turn it back on. We're not quite ready to, to uh, uh, we're not quite ready to put these in yet because we wanna put them in all at the same time. But I'm gonna start raising my temperature of the water now because we wanna, we're gonna boil it again. So before I'm done canning or filling the jars, I'm just gonna turn my water on so that it can start heating because it just takes a while to heat. Um, Fill these up. It would be easier if I could use my hand, but I don't have a. I want to I'm touching too many things a camera, equipment. So I would sometimes shake it every now and then, make sure that they fall lay flat. I like these slice ones better. <laughs> It'll be a chore doing the other one. Okay. So food naturally breaks down, right? When you leave it sitting on the shelf and if, if it's hot, the enzymes can actually take over the food and break it down. So that's just that's just what happens, right? Good fresh food actually will do that. Bad food where you won't break down, they'll stay on the shelf for years, like Twinkies and Cocos and that kind of thing. So we want to eat foods that break down. That's the best thing you can do is eat foods that will rot because that's fresh good food, real food. But uh, when we're canning, we want to try and can when when the when your nut one is the freshest. That's the best time to can. So remember, we said if you only have one or two jalapeno plants and they only produce like six chili, maybe we use a smaller jar and maybe we cut them up so we can fill up the jars. And we're going to can those the day we pick them. And that, uh, sometimes what you can do is pick them, put them in the refrigerator, and then do it that way. So those are things that you can do. But it's best to actually can them as soon as you pick 
from the, from the garden or buy them at the store. When you buy them at the store, they're already probably two, three days old. So if you have a backyard garden, this is a great way to save some of those. Oh, we're running out of rhyme. Okay, I'm gonna check for bubbles. Measure my head space. Good, wipe the top of the rim. Put the ring on, finger tighten. It's tight, it's tight as tight as your fingers will let you. And I don't know if we have enough rind. You might have to be back one more. So we'll get one more. We only have enough lids for one more. Okay. So the longest part is really just getting everything ready. Getting your jars, getting your pot out, filling with water, getting your ingredients, preparing your, your stuff that you're going to can. I mean, it's pretty involved. I usually set aside one, I set aside a whole day to do this, but if you're doing it, like if you're going to do four, you know, four quarts of chili, like this recipe said, I would set aside one morning. That way you're not rushed and you're not, um, especially if you've never done it before, it's your first time. Give yourself time to, to to try it or to work through it. So be okay. Last one. Okay. I think we have enough. Yeah, we have enough. Okay. Bubbles up. So when I first started doing this, I was all by my, I do it by myself, and now we do it so often that my, my husband actually helps us. In the, um, when, when, in the, when September, I'll be canning almost three times a week, every weekend, because we got so much coming in by then. So I definitely need help, so I'm really glad that not to, to above himself to not help with this kind of thing. I could pull the rack out because there's a lid stuck to the edge. But that gives me a chance to show you the rack. So this is the rack. It, um, it allows you to have it sit up high because of these little notches on the edge. So we're going to set it there, and then we're going to load our jars. I put them on opposite ends when I'm loading. Because if you all put them on one side, it starts to tilt, and it's just better when you put them all on the same side. Okay, so the recipe said it would fill eight pints. It really only gave us seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But the pot, the pot can actually fit eight, maybe nine and 10. It might be able to fit 10, 10, um, 10 pints. It'll fit seven quarts, I know that much. Fill it, but it's really heavy when you lift it up. We're gonna pull in the handles and then we're gonna drop it slowly in. When we drop it in, we're going to make sure our handles are still up because when we're done, we can't pick the whole thing up out of boiling hot water if the handles are up. Um, we also want to make sure our jars are straight up. When we put them in the, in the canning pot, they should be like this. They shouldn't be tilted or kind of falling over and definitely in the amount like this. They should be straight up. Okay, just double check that. If you put the lid on, it'll it will start the heat. The boiling point will come fast. We're, we're, so now we're actually canning. This is actually what it means to can. Let me show you one thing before we can. Let's say we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven jars of chili. But this one, we want to eat like tomorrow. We're going to eat this pretty soon, so you, you don't even have to put do this step. You can just put the lid on and put it in the refrigerator, let it sit overnight, and it'll start to pickle. And then it'll, the longer it sits there, the better it'll get. And you can start eating it right away. But you won't be able to put it on the shelf and store it because it's not processed, it's not sealed. So the part we're doing now is sealing these jars. So up to this point, we can give them all away to all our friends and they can open it right away. But we want to keep these on the shelf. This is the last step that we have to do. This is the canning step. We're processing the jars. That means we're going to boil them. Every recipe is different. Read your recipe. That's the number one rule. 
for processing times. So this recipe says recommended processing time for pickling peppers in a boiling water canner. If you're using half pints, or this is a half pint jar actually right here, or a pint is from zero to 1,000 feet in elevation, it's 10 minutes. Do you know what elevation we are? Are we at, or are we at 1,000 elevation at least? Can anybody tell me, yes or no? I'm gonna look at my chat, see what people are saying. I no, I don't, they don't know. Anybody know? So you're gonna have to know your elevation if you want a water bath can, first thing. Don't Google it. The other, so the other times on here say half pint or pint jars from 1,001 feet to 6,000 feet in elevation process for 15 minutes. And then above 6,000 feet process for 20 minutes. So I see uh, Valerie says we're at 6,000 feet. I think up at your mom's house on the Mesa at Tewa, it's probably close to 6,000. At the bottom where we live right now in, in Second Mesa at the junction of 264 and 87, it's probably closer to 5,500. So um, here, because we're closer to 5,500 at my house, and that's where we're canning, we're gonna process up to 15 minutes, okay? If we were, crop, if we were processing at uh, Valerie at your mother's house up in Tewa, or my mother's at Stomobi, we would probably run them for 20. So you're gonna notice that your elevation does matter when you're canning. The higher the elevation, the longer you have to process, basically. So we are gonna process for 15 minutes. So let me ask you guys a question. I haven't taught you this yet, but some of you might know since you can. Shall we start timing it right now for 15 minutes? Yes or no, what do you think? Okay, no, 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 great job. You guys already know your stop. We are not gonna time the 15 minutes now. Remember we talked about that rolling boiling point is 212 degrees. We need that 212 degrees to kill any of the bacteria that might have gotten in our nice sterile jars. Probably some of them did because the smell has to do with tools. So there's, I'm talking. So there's um, probably some stuff that got in the jar. So we want to kill all that bacteria in the jar that's sitting right in this water. But that doesn't start to happen until the water starts to boil, boil, boil hard and it reaches 212. And then we gotta sustain that 212 degree temperature uh, for at least 15 minutes. That is what's gonna kill and then seal the jars, okay? So we put them in, we have the temperature going, it's still not boiling. So I'm not gonna start the temperatures, I mean the timer, until we get to that rolling boil stage. So well, all I have to do now, we just wait and we kind of wait and wait and wait and we keep checking and then in about probably 10 minutes or so I hope they'll start to really boil. So the water was probably hot but it now has to heat the jar and everything in the jar. So that takes a while for all of that to, that temperature to raise and the oil. So once it starts roller boiling we will turn the timer on for 15 and count down for 15 minutes and we'll leave the temperature high so it continues to boil hard. At the end of 15 minutes, when the timer goes off, we'll turn off the heat. We'll take our jars out, and when you take your jars out, you take them, you lift them straight out and put them straight down. When we lift them out, there's water on the top of the jar because there's a little kind of tiny little quarter inch mark, I mean, depth between the rim and the lid. We want to go like this and take the water off. Do not do that. Just pull it up the water on and set it straight down. As it cools, the suction will pull that um, lid in and then it'll suck it in and that's what creates the final seal when it cools. So right now we're just killing, we're getting ready to kill everything and then as it cools, it seals. As it seals, you'll start to hear, that's what's happening to your jars. What's going on is when a canning lid um, if you look real close, there's a, actually a little indentation on the middle of the jar. And if you look real close, you can't see it on the camera, but when you look at your lids, you'll see there's a little, a little bump. And as it cools, what it's doing is it's pulling that in. 
And that's what you'll hear. You'll hear your jars. What you're doing is it's, it's pulling it in and sealing it. And that's what you hear, that little tip. That little, so one way to check that they're all sealed is to go and, and make sure all those little things are pushed in. Because you can't push them in once they've sealed themselves. If they haven't sealed themselves well, then you didn't have a good seal for whatever reason. And you're going to have to eat that jar pretty quick because it, it didn't seal. It's not going to stay on the shelf very long. We're just going to open it up, share it, give it away, eat it, whatever. Just but it can't be preserved on the shelf. The other thing that can happen during this stage and, and the first stage when you're actually sterilizing your jars is if you did not check your jars before you, when you're washing them, before you started to sterilize them, any jar that has a crack or a chip may break. And sometimes it doesn't happen until we're at this stage when the jars are full. So I've had a lot of instances when I'm finished and I'm done and I think I'm, you know, I, I get the rolling boil, I turn the timer on and I leave it and I go do something else. My timer goes off, I go back to the pot and I open it up and there's a whole bunch of, in this case, jalapenos floating around in the water. It's because a jar broke. So sometimes they can, it, that can happen during this step. So we'll just pull all the other jars that are still okay out, let them cool, dump the water, we're gonna recant our it again. And then once the jars that have been, that did not um, break and that were nicely sealed, we'll just wipe them all down because they're all hot with chili oil, chili water, and then mark them and put them on. The last thing I wanna say about canning is um, once they're cooled, usually I leave, we, we'll be done here by, 12, 12, 15 with this set. And I'll let them cool for the rest of the afternoon. So this evening, what I'm going to do is then write on the label what it is and what the date is today. You put the date that you canned, not the date that we picked them. We're lucky some of these jalapenos we picked this morning, we're canning them today. But let's say I picked some like three days ago, but I just canned them today. I'm definitely going to put the date I canned them. What's the date today? August. 12. So the lid, so what you're going to get when you get your jar of pickled uh, peppers, it's going to say pickled jalapenos because we know this is a jalapeno. We're going to put 8, 12, 20 on there. So you get a jar. So, you, so you, that'll, that can sit on the shelf until next year if you want it to. Unless you want to eat them faster. Uh, they'll be preserved well enough for you to, 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 to um, store them. Store them in a cool, dry place. Store them uh, on a single shelf. Don't stack them. Because of that seal, just leave them on one shelf. And then, then you know how old it is. This one I were told is 2018. Are there any questions? OK. So we're not going to leave you on the line to wait. Um, I mean, we'll leave it up. If you want to come back and check, it's going to take at least I'm taking another 20 minutes for it to get to the rolling boil, and then we have 15 minutes to actually boil it. So it's going to be about 35 minutes until we um, until we finish finish the end. And the other um, piece about preserving green chili, my favorite way, um, it takes some energy to do this. That's not using pressure canning. Um, is to there's two ways you can dry it. We know that as red chili, you leave the chili on the stem and you let it redden, and then you pick it. And then you just air dry it and then we hang them or put, I put mine in jars. We can make a bunch of stuff that way. And then with green chili, I roast it and then I um, peel them. You can, I can chop them up or I can leave them whole and then I put them in a baggie and then I freeze them. That's what I meant about taking more energy. There's a lot more steps, but you, you'll um, freeze it and then you, and I freeze mine in like one cup um, snack bag sizes. So I just pull a cup out when we're going to make enchiladas. We have a family of three, so I, I, I do a lot of my things small. Um, and then I do like two or three, like two cup bags. So when we have bigger dinners, we can pull out a bigger bag. Um, it's, it's involved, but if you have a big batch, like two gunny sacks worth, you do it all in one day, um, it's, it's worth it for the whole season. But great job. I'm so glad to see that you're growing food. Growing food leads to preservation naturally and it leads to seed saving. That's just what happens when you start to have your own backyard gardens. If you're not sure whether you can water bath or need to pressure can, 
read the book. It'll tell you you need to water bath method or pressure can at this many minutes and that, that kind of thing. And then at the very beginning of the book, there's actually a good chart. So right here is uh, on this chart on page six. It actually tells you what you can and cannot water bath. So at the top are all the foods you can water bath because they have high acids. And at the bottom um, turns into pressure canning foods. So you'll begin to learn what you can and cannot do with this method. So, we're, so over the next several classes we're offering, we're gonna offer uh, water bathing again, where we're gonna water bath um, apple butter. And then the third class, we're gonna water bath marinara sauce. So we're not gonna really teach you to make all those sauces because, I mean, we're gonna give you recipes to do it, but we're, we're, what we're trying to tell you is there's so many other things you can water bath can, not just jalapenos and not just jams. There's like so many other things. So we're going to teach you easier things to start with, and hopefully um, that'll get you going. Um, if you don't have the tools, go get the tools. About $10 for the four set of four and about 20 to 25 for the pot. And then start collecting some jars and come again. So maybe you'll see something a little bit different, or if you've never uh, canned apple butter, try it. Like come again and learn how we make it and learn how we can that. And not too much different than it with the process, but the ingredient is a little bit different. Okay. Thanks, everyone. We're glad you joined us. Have a great day.